Bonjour, bienvenue. I'm Sonali Krishna and you're watching the Brand Equity Can Lines 2015 special. It's been a super hectic week. The sun, the sand, the technology, all the data talk and of course the global outburst of creativity right here at Can just never took a break. But don't take my word for it. Take a look for yourself. It's a great environment for advertisers to introduce a message. The way you win is by growing the top line. The first money that I ever spent, and you appreciate this from your job, job point of view, is that I trademarked the name Marilyn Manson in the same way as Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse. The U.S. became the world's leader by making better decisions than any other nation. John Ruskin once said, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. There must be a will to produce a superior thing. And this very powerful statement holds true for the Dutch brewer Heineken. Heineken was named the Creative Marketer of the Year at Cannes for the second time. And this is no mean feat. In the words of the brewer's Executive Director Global Marketing, Soren Haig, great creativity starts with a decision. And unless you demand creativity and greatness, you're probably never going to get it. And this is amply clear if you look at the body of work that has come out of Heineken over the last couple of years. I caught up with Soren to understand the creative processes the company has put into place and how it has managed to wing it year on year. Take it away. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Soren. This is truly a pleasure. And firstly, many congratulations on bagging the very coveted title of the Creative Marketer of the Year. Well, thank you very much. I believe that Heineken in, in the last uh, few years has really been attempting to get the entire organization to understand uh, what uh, new age creativity means and uh, you know, effective creative campaigns. Give me a sense in terms of the parameters you have for your creative ladder. Like you have, for instance, I believe number 10 is, you know, path breaking epic campaign or epic creative. Absolutely. Uh, give me the other uh, classifications that you have. Yeah, so the, I'm probably not going to go through all 10, but what I would do, I'm sure. going to take some of the key ones sure, because, sure. again, you've got to have one which is disruptive. So you, 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 you advertise like that and it will literally negatively impact your brand in a big, big way. So you honestly don't see much creativity like that. It's, it's, it's sure. very rarely happening. Sure. What's very interesting is what we call a fall, which is, which is a cliché. Okay. Cliché advertising is interesting because, you know, it takes the category codes and simply amplify them. Simply tell the story you already know. So mm -hmm. if it's about beer, you know, it's about young, beautiful people uh, drinking together, beautiful cold beer, everybody smiling and having a good time. There's nothing wrong with that as such, you could say, because that's exactly what beer is about. But actually the truth is, everything is wrong with that. Because it, all you're telling the consumer is, this is a beer. But they know it's a beer. Sure. So therefore you're simply just reconfirming codes that already exist. And that's why we think four is the most dangerous place to be because actually it's an okay ad but it's doing nothing for your brand. Sure. The, the lowest we accept as an acceptable standard at Heineken is a five. And that's what we call ownable. Ownable ads are basically ads that are unique to your brand. So only I can tell this story. That's often good enough actually. A lot of messages can be delivered in that way in a completely sustainable long-term way and we are often happy with that actually for many of our brands. Wow, okay. However, what we also believe is that the future of advertising, the future creative, belongs to what we call seven plus creativity. Because once you get to at least seven, you build talkability into your creative. And talkability really means you want to share it with your friends. Sure. It's advertising and it's a communication that is so good that it makes people want to talk about it. So Soren, tell me, when did the need arise for you know, a system like this, how long ago, and where did that 
that need stem from? Well, it came from, you know, it, it came from, it's, it's, not, it's not that old, it's only a couple of years ago where we started actually looking at, you know, the fact that we did quite a lot of, of, of communication at Heineken that just didn't work. That was just terrible. Um, now, we always believed, and I still believe, that that's simply a part, to some extent, of the creative process. Mm. But when we looked at the, the amounts of times we didn't get it right, and same for many of our competitors also didn't get it right, we asked ourselves, wouldn't it be extremely powerful if you could reduce the amount of things we got wrong? If you could increase, you could say, the batting average for, uh, for our creativity. Sure. And, and really, the, the kind of rallying cry was to say, let's increase our batting average in this area here. Mm -hmm. And again, that's recognizing we're still going to get some of it wrong. But I think what we are on the journey to do is to reduce the amount of things that we get wrong and increase the stuff that actually is truly great. You know, I really want to talk about your creative council that you've instituted, where I believe you have uh, a mix of your internal marketers and yeah. agency partners. Um, I a want to know how this works, yeah. uh, and uh, b what has been uh, the output that you've seen because of this council that's that's been put together. One thing that that keeps me awake at night is the the oh, the ever present risk of arrogance when you're doing well, you know, or, or kind of complacency. You, you lean back and you're kind of, you know, everybody tells you how good you are and therefore you start believing it. That's dangerous because we live in a world where brilliance comes from everywhere. You know, small startups, big companies, anyone. If we start not being on our toes all the time, we are going to be overtaken faster than anyone can ever imagine. And that's why we said we need a way to keep us sharp. We need people that actually keep us to the very highest standards. And that's where these creative councils came from. And really, it's, it's a group of people that are our very best internal, you can say, creative talents, uh, our best, very best partners from outside, the best creative directors we have, the best kind of uh, partners we have in consultants, kind of marketing consultant uh, uh, companies. And it's a brilliant debate. And actually, out of those conversations, people get a much firmer understanding of what is greatness, what does it take to deliver greatness. Sorin, you talked about agency partners. Now, you know, more and more, you're just dealing with more and more partners mm. as, you know, we, we have more and more platforms and, yeah. you know, technology, etc. Uh, how difficult is it for you to navigate through, uh, you know, a multiple uh, layered structure and also to ensure that everybody is on the same page yeah. and uh, you know the kind of effort it takes for coordination communication all of that translating into this grand creative output the implication of all the changes is that what it takes to be a great marketing organization is changing very very fast yeah. now suddenly you actually need to uh, uh, put a lot of different you can say intelligent people together and you need to make sure that they work as a as an orchestra where they yeah. all play the same they, they all play different yeah. different um, different uh, instruments but they all play one overall uh, all their own overall tune and, and that means that as a, as a marketeer, you need to have a completely different skill set. You need to hold all these many different uh, balls in the air at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And that means that you need more senior marketing people uh, often. We need people who can really handle the complexity, who understand the relative um, merits of, uh, of each of the various kind of opportunities. Mm -hmm. You could say you need to actually have the, the tune properly uh, written. Otherwise, okay. all the different pieces of the orchestra don't know what to play. If you look around, as of today, we have some of the largest spenders in the yeah. world who've got their agencies up for review. Yeah. So whether we talk about Mondelez or you talk about Visa or you talk about L'Oreal or you talk about, I mean, you name it and it's up yeah. for review. Yeah. Uh, why do you think this is happening? And it can't be sheer coincidence. No, it's, again, it's, it's, it's the, the fact that this new world represents amazing opportunities, but also amazing pressures, because we need to move much faster. And of course, it means that the pressure on agencies also, as it is on us, becomes, uh, becomes increasingly big. Mm. And with that, of course, you keep, while in the past, maybe you did not need all the time to ask yourself, do I really have the perfect setup? Does it really work in the perfect way? Because working, you know, 70% well was good enough. Well... That's not the case anymore. Unless you work 110% on what you do, you're going to lose. It's right. a good thing, though. It's a good thing because it creates much, much better work. But it, it also create... creates a lot of insecurity. It, it creates more change. That's, uh, that's, that's for sure. And, and, and again, if you're not comfortable with change, then, then the world of marketing is a difficult place to be in because sure. it is changing very that fast. Uh, if you can tell me in terms of your business vision, 
where is it that you'd like Heineken to be, let's say, five years from now? Well, business vision in terms of, uh, of where, we see, um, where we see our business going, what we see one is a, a, a kind of geographical footprint yeah. that is going to continue expanding and going to continue to be very balanced because that is for us very, very important. At the same time, I think what we're also going to see is that the whole definition of our category is going to broaden. Consumers are more and more recognizing that actually there are much more opportunities, both within the world of beer, but also in things like cider, in non-alcoholic drinks and so on, that are based on some of the brewing techniques we know from beer. So we see a world where the, the whole definition of the category we are in is going to change. On that note, thank you so much, sir. And this has been truly insightful. And uh, many, many congratulations once again on bagging the Creative Marketer of the Year Award at the Cannes Lions 2015. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.